At a number 10 spot, we have Zombie Road. Hidden away in eastern Missouri is Rock Hollow Trail, otherwise known as Zombie Road. It was first built in late 1860s to provide a way to the Meramec River, into the Glencoe, and various other railroad tracks. However, as the years went by, this road became notorious for being extremely haunted. Many who travel down this road claim that they're being watched by shadows that lurk behind the woods surrounding the entire road. And there's so much more that happened here. One story is that of a zombie killer who was a psychopathic hermit who lived in these woods and would attack young lovers who were just looking for a place to be alone. And to add to all of that, it's really no surprise this place is haunted because it was built directly on top of the largest Native American burial grounds. Not only are there just natives here, but many were buried here during the Civil War. So this place has been haunted for generations. At our number nine spot, we have Landers Theater. The Landers Theater in Springfield, Missouri has a very troubled past, which is the reason why many believe this place is still haunted. Opening in 1909, it didn't take long for tragedy to strike this place because 11 years later in 1920, a fire engulfed much of this theater, which claimed the life of one of the janitors. And he's one of the spirits many performers see, claiming that he stands on top of the balconies watching as they rehearse. Sometime after that, a baby fell down to their death from the second story of the theater. And since that tragedy, many will hear a crying baby in the audience even after hours. And the most famous spot of the theater is the area that separates the first and the second floor balconies. Here many visitors claim to be tapped on their shoulders and whispered at and this is all because in the 1940s someone was stabbed to death here and now their spirit is said to stay here. Nowadays the theater remains open and if you really want to see if it's haunted I would recommend booking a ticket right now. At a number 8 spot we have Momo the Monster. Momo the Monster otherwise known as the Missouri Monster is a 7 feet tall hairy beast that has terrorized the residents of Louisiana Missouri since the 1970s. The first sighting of the creature took place in July 1971 when Joanne Mills and Mary Rines spotted the beast up the Mississippi River describing its large stature and glowing orange eyes. After that report, many family dogs would be found dead along the Mississippi River and this is when two young boys and their sister spotted the creature holding one of the dogs in its hand. Many of the eyewitnesses claim that the creature reeked of rotten flesh and had growls similar to a bear. Before long, the news media picked up on the story, attracting curiosity seekers and monster hunters from around the country. At number 7 spot we have the Joplin Spook Light. The Spook Light, otherwise known as the Joplin Spook Light, is a weird phenomenon when there is a supposed ghost light that appears in an area known as the Devil's Promenade, which borders the states of Missouri and Oklahoma. Basically when you travel along this road, you may see a mysterious orb. And although it has many stories about it, the amount of photos that contain the light is enough to make anyone think that this isn't something normal. One legend of the light talks about a local miner who went back to his home only to discover that his whole family went missing and his cabin was burned down to the ground. Now his ghost is walking spook light road with a lantern in his hand searching for his family explaining the light. At a number 6 spot we have the Ozark Howler. The Ozark Howler otherwise known as the Nightshade Bear or the Devil Cat is a mysterious creature that lurks in remote areas of Missouri. This beast is a very intimidating predator considering it has a body of a bear, stocky legs, glowing red eyes and even sharp horns. It would be the last thing you want to encounter on your hiking trip. Sightings of this creature have been reported since the 1950s and between 2005 and 2010 the howler was reported by many many more people. The creature got its name from its iconic howl which is described to be a very deep and the combination of a wolf's howl, an elk's buggle and the laugh of a hyena. So however you want to imagine that, that's how it would sound like. In more recent years, many people are believing that this creature is nothing more than an eastern cougar or even a black bear. Or perhaps even a hybrid of both. And this is because the creature has yet to be photographed. But at least they howl, so if they do exist, you have ample time to not get pummeled by this beast. In the hump of our list, we have Phelps Grove Park. The history of Phelps Grove Park is both long and fascinating. It served as both Governor John S. Phelps House and a tribal village for many Native American people. The park, which spans around 44 acres on East Bennett Street, is very old, but the spirit found inside of this park is much more recent. The story is that one night a bride and the groom were strolling at this park in their carriage, when all of a sudden the groom became jealous, causing the carriage to flip off the bridge upside down. This accident caused the bride to snap her neck, ending her life immediately. Now many locals have seen the ghost bride underneath the bridge, saying that she stands there with her right hand holding the hem of her dress as if she's about to take a step. Apparently 
Apparently she appears there every evening, but if you try to get a closer look, she'll just vanish right in front of you. On our fourth spot, we have Drury University. Drury University in Springfield, Missouri is built right on top of Native American burial grounds. Need I say more? We've seen it in movies, we've heard it in stories. Building on top of native burial grounds is always bound to be a bad idea. Not only the concept of building over people's graves, but this kind of thing tends to have everlasting effects. One of the halls in the university, known as Smith Hall, was built in the grounds of old Victorian houses, where one girl passed away after trying to get her teddy bear in a fire. Now many students in the university claim to see this child walking around, and others claim that their stuffed animals move due to this child's ghost, but if that's the case, this is just another one of those Chucky and Annabelle situations. At our number three spot, we have Union Station. Union Station in Kansas City is a railroad station that transports both the living and the dead. Built in 1914, this station had millions going through it, which meant that a few deaths were expected to happen within. One of the notorious spirits found here is the ghost of a bank robber named Frank Nash, who along with four peace officers was killed during a rescue attempt. Those who are regulars at the station claim to see Nash's spirit around, saying that he is faceless, wearing a suit, tie, and polished shoes. At number two spot, we have the Headless Cobbler of Smollett Cave. A creature known as the Headless Cobbler would be spotted in Ava, Missouri, during the 1920s. Story goes that two young women were walking along Spring Creek at midnight when a man stepped out from the side of the road who appeared to have no head, shoes around his neck, and a Bible around his shoulder. Weird outfit choice, but when you have no head, I guess everything's a fashion statement. In the next year, two boys spotted the same thing when they were riding their horses along the same creek when they spotted a headless man floating above the ground. More recent sightings have been at Smollett Cave where he now hides out supposedly, and can be heard tapping away as he cobbles shoes. If you happen to see a single light coming from the cave at night, it's said to be the headless cobbler holding his lantern. At our number one spot, we have Lemp Mansion. The Lemp Mansion is considered to be one of the scariest locations in America, according to Travel Channel. In 1840, Lemp opened a small brewery not far from where the current gateway arch is now. It was the most prosperous companies in the region by 1879, and dominated the St. Louis beer market. After his death in August 1862, his son William took over and began major expansions, which only grew the company much more. However, the house would become a curse for their entire family. Inside of the home, there were three of the core family members who took their own life, and ever since, many claim that their spirits are bound to this home. In 1949, the mansion was sold off and transformed into a boarding house. It wasn't long before hauntings were reported. Witnesses claimed to see a boy who asked for someone to play with. There were also reports of inexplicable burning sensations, cold spots, slamming doors, and all sorts of other mysterious sounds. At number 10 spot, we have the Phantom Hitchhiker of Black Horse Lake. Near the city of Great Falls in Cascade County is a tale about a very notorious yet mysterious hitchhiker. If you happen to be coming off of Highway 87 going down Fort Benton, you may encounter a man on the side of the road at night. The area is very flat, so the man is very easy to spot when you're driving down this road. But unlike other people on the side of the roads, this person isn't looking to get a ride. Instead, once your car gets closer, the person is reported to roll over the hood of your car, across the windshield of the vehicle, as if they had been struck. As people begin to check on the man after they hit, they realize that they had hit nothing and the person they previously saw just disappeared. Over the years, there have been hundreds of reports that claim the same thing. They drive on this road, then they hit a man, only to find out it was nothing. Many believe this is the spirit of a Native American man who got struck and killed on this road. However, there's still no written document on it. At number 9 spot, we have Sacrifice Cliff. Overlooking Billings, Montana is Sacrifice Cliff. Despite the breathtaking views and scenic paths, this place has a very dark history attached to it. I mean, you probably already know that just by the name alone. Story goes that this cliff was once a peaceful meditation spot for the men of the Crow tribe. When they arrived here, they would be in complete silence which showed the amount of respect they had for the area. However, a smallpox outbreak hit the area, causing the majority of the Crow tribe to perish within days. So one day, some of the boys returned to their homes from Sacrifice Cliff, only to discover that their entire village, including their family members, had all passed away from smallpox. They were so distraught they didn't see a point in living, so the boys decided to sacrifice themselves over this cliff. They would return back to the cliff with their horses, then they would proceed to blindfold the horse and then ride off these very cliffs to their deaths. Although this is a very sad tale, if you decide to visit this place at night, you may hear the sound of these horses as if they're falling from the cliff to this day. At number 8 spot, we have Flathead Lake Monster. Lurking in Flathead Lake is said to be a monster that closely resembles the Loch Ness Monster. 
But hey, I swear every place has their own version of it, so here's Montana's version. For those who don't know, Flathead Lake is situated northeast Montana, just in case you guys want to avoid this place for your next swim. Many visit this lake for its unprecedented beauty, but since 1889, there have been reports coming in the boatloads about this creature. It's described as a very large eel-like creature that moves around like a snake and is as long as 40 feet. Many say its head is shaped like a bowling ball with multiple humps on its back. No wonder people think this is the Loch Ness Monster. It all started in 1889 when James C. Kerr was making rounds across the lake when he and his passengers discovered this creature. They described it as a whale like from its sheer size alone. Ever since, there's been hundreds of sightings, but who really knows what lies underneath the depths of this lake? At number 7 spot, we have the Alberta Bear Theater. Located in Billings, Montana as well is the famous Alberta Bear Theater. The theater was originally named the Fox Theater, but in 1987, the theater was renamed the Alberta Bear Theater in honor of his daughter, Alberta. And this 1400 seat theater was like any other. It was beautiful on the inside, which housed many professional touring companies and various performing artists. However, most visitors and workers claim to see the same two spirits lurking inside of the theater. This includes one male entity and one female. The male is described as wanting to be noticed, out of sorts, and very possessive, while the female is described as being very benign and very friendly. So let's talk about the guy. It's said that he is the spirit of a past employee who took his own life at the theater, which keeps him there trapped for eternity. So if you guys are looking to come to this theater, be on the lookout for these two. At number 6 spot, we have the Garnet Ghost Town in Coloma. Coloma, Montana is known as the Mystery Camp and is a ghost town located a few miles north of the better known Garnet Ghost Town on the Garnet Back County Byway. Very little is known about the Coloma settlement other than records indicating it that it began in 1893 and experienced high gold mining activities starting in 1896. But by the 1940s, the mines had completely run out and the boom went bust. Eventually, the place would be emptied out and be left abandoned, and this is where many locals claim that the spirits ended up taking over the place. One state historian claims that once the sun sets in Garnett, the spirits of the town historic's residents come alive. Ellen Baumler, the Montana Historical Society's resident ghost whisperer and author, wrote, quote, At midnight, people have heard ghostly fingers striking piano keys with the music floating across the empty buildings. She continued saying, quote, Especially during the winter months, visitors see visions and hear unearthly noises. They cause no trouble and anyone who visits the deserted town in the dead of winter should be prepared to meet them. They hide in the shadows, laugh in the wind, and come out when you least expect them. Right in the hump of our list, we have Bear Canyon. Mashed in between Chestnut Mountain and Mount Ellis is a beautiful stretch of land known as Bear Canyon. It's best known for its scenic hiking trail and is one of the most popular sites in the Bozeman area. And as we all know, a place that is beautiful on the outside is usually hiding something very dark on the inside. According to the Bozeman Paranormal Society, Bear Canyon is a place for spirits and not for humans. Sightings of the paranormal have been recorded since the late 1800s, which is ever since we started to settle inside of that piece of land. Many people have reported seeing a little girl who attempts to lead them off of the trail and into the woods. The little girl targets women and for those who follow this girl, they will find themselves lost in the middle of the canyon. Others claim to have seen a strange mist on Bear Canyon Road and many have gone missing when they enter inside of this strange mist. Number 4, Moss Mansion. Built in 1903, this red brick mansion was a turn of the century home. It was 3 stories tall with 28 different rooms inside. The mansion was built for the Moss family who treated it like their pride and their joy. Eventually, they would have around 6 children and 3 servants occupying the home. Years went by and all was good until they suffered their first devastating loss. Just five years after the house was built, the youngest child named Virginia passed away while she was only six years old. Then, 40 years later, in 1947, the dad, Preston B. Moss, passed away from a heart attack. Then, soon after, followed the wife who passed away from a cerebral hemorrhage. Then, 30 years later, another one of the sons named Melville passed away in 1984. This family ended up inhabiting the home from 1903 all the way until 1984. So best believe their deaths in the home have some sort of effect. The mansion has now been turned into a museum and many visitors report various paranormal activity. Some include a ghostly female voice singing in the billiards room 
and many staff members report a cool wind that goes up and around their bodies as they walk through the halls of the mansion. At number three, we have Bannock Ghost Town. When gold was discovered along Crasshopper Creek in Bannock, Montana, the town went from a ghost town to a blooming community. Following the economic growth, a man named Henry Plummer became the sheriff of the town and the leader of a gang known as the Innocents. Plummer's gang is linked to over a hundred murders and robberies, and during his brief time as sheriff, Plummer erected the Bannock Gallows, only to be hanged from them himself after being apprehended by a group of vigilantes. Bannock State Park still has the gallows, but many people who have visited claim that there's too much negative energy and supernatural activity in that specific area. Many claim to even see the spirit of Henry Plummer himself, as he said to be still pleading for his life. At number two spot, we have Little Bighorn Battlefield. The Battle of Little Bighorn occurred on 1876 in the grassy plains of Bighorn River Valley and bluffs that exist around and along the Bighorn River. This was where General Custer and his men were brutally and completely defeated by the Soaks and Cheyenne warriors led by Crazy Horse and Sitting Bull. So best believe a place like this has a few restless spirits. I mean, every battlefield has one, you guys should know this. Visitors and employees have reported strange noises and even seeing full-fledged apparitions of soldiers after dark. Now near the battlefield cemetery is where the most activity is said to happen. Many visitors claim to have been consumed by the feeling of deep sorrow and loss when they walk the cemetery grounds. And the stone house, which was built in 1894 for the cemetery's caretakers, is home to some of the most terrifying ghost stories. Some include lights aggressively flickering on and off, until you leave the home. And others report seeing soldiers with missing limbs, such as missing heads or legs, indicating some of the injuries they went through during the war. At number one spot, we have Dude Rancher Lodge. Built in 1940 by Annabelle and Percival Gowen, the Dude Rancher Lodge was originally constructed using salvaged bricks from the old St. Vincent's Hospital. The couple ran the hotel together until 1962, where Percival passed away after a car accident. Annabelle continued to run the hotel on her own, though slowly her health began to decline. She lived in an apartment at the hotel and was cared for by her dedicated staff until eventually she was moved to a nursing home. Then on February 2nd, 1983, Annabelle passed away. Since her passing, this lodge has had too many supernatural activities to count. This includes televisions turning on and off while the housekeepers are cleaning the room, knocking on the doors when no one is on the other side, the sound of children running in the halls with no children being present, and a mysterious female voice was even caught on audio tape in the basement of the hotel. If you ever want to stay here, then try to avoid rooms 223, 224, and especially 226, which is said to be Annabelle's grandson's room who took his own life in that room. At number 10 spot, we have the Seven Sisters Road. Located in southeast Nebraska, just outside of Nebraska City, is a road that locals call Seven Sisters Road. And if you're trying to find this on a map, it will be named L Street. But I wouldn't recommend taking a road trip down this place. Legend goes that a man had an argument with his parents and his seven sisters. It got to a point when his whole family hated him and he looked to seek revenge. So one day he waited in the woods outside of his home and waited for his parents to leave. After he forced or baited his sisters one by one outside of the house, he would end up hanging each and every single one of them where this road is situated today. Then eventually a road would be built on this path of the trees, causing them to be shut down. Ever since the construction of the road, this road is said to be haunted by the seven sisters who were executed. Many who have driven through the area report having problems with their cars stalling, headlights mysteriously dimming, speedometers freezing, and windows that roll up and down seemingly on their own. At our number nine spot, we have Alliance Theater. On the east side of Nebraska is one of the most iconic buildings in the state, and that is the Alliance Theater. This was built back in 1903, starting off as a hotel, but in 1938, it was then rebranded into Imperial Theater until it switched to the name Alliance. It would host many different performing arts, but it said a few performers passed away inside of the theater. Some were caused by accidents, such as an actress named Mary who passed away after a piece of lightning equipment fell on her. Now, over the years, over its existence, many workers at the theater have reported their own ghostly tales. Some include whispers as if someone's right behind them and shadow figures walking around and some are even seen performing. Even in 2002, the owner, Gerald Bullard, had said to reporters that, quote, if the theater is actually haunted, then the ghosts are very friendly. It still remains open to this day, and many visitors claim to see the spirit of Mary. At our number eight spot, we have Blackbird Hill. North of Decatur, Nebraska, is a hill overlooking the Missouri River, and this hill is said to be infested with spirits. One notorious spirit that most visitors spot is of a young lady who could be screaming near the cliff. Legend goes that in 1840, a young couple in the area fell in love. 
This relationship carried both of them through school, but soon after they were done, the boy decided to travel abroad. His initial plan was to travel the world, then come back and marry the girl. But after a few months, the man never ended up returning back home. Months turned into years, and eventually the devastated girl gave up and married another man. The new couple then decided to move to a small cabin to what is now Blackbird Hill. And this is when the girl spotted her ex-fiance walking up to the cabin. She was shocked and then confessed the love for the man and went back home to tell her new fiance that she wanted to leave him and have a divorce. The new fiance got very angry and in a rage took her to the nearby cliff and proceeded to jump off together. The ex-fiance arrived but just too late only to hear the agonizing scream of his former wife. This occurred on October 17th and many visitors gather up in this day because it's said that you can still hear her screams down the cliff. At a number 7 spot we have the Poison Girl at Centennial Hall. Built in 1897 in Valentine, Nebraska is the historic Centennial Hall. It functions now as a 12 room museum but before it was originally built to be a high school for the kids in the area. Then in 1947 a young female student was murdered inside of the school. She passed away after playing on her clarinet. This caused everyone to suspect that someone had intentionally poisoned her clarinet root. Ever since the incident, the school was haunted by this little girl. The teachers would report her in their classrooms after school times, and this would accompany the feeling of dread. Other visitors and students report to hear her clarinet being played in a very ominous way. Now as a museum, visitors still report this logo roaming the halls. She is said to have tugged on people's clothing as well as placing her clarinet on many of the artifacts inside of the museum in hopes that someone will play it and be poisoned like she was. At number 6 spot we have Radioactive Hornets. Although this theory is debunked, it was a crazy one when it was first released to the media because many people didn't know how radiation worked and whatever they said about it would just scare you. Story goes that after the nuclear disasters following World War II in the 1940s, Japan's Fukushima nuclear plant created a giant mutant killer hornet due to their exposure to radiation. The hornets were said to have grown four times their size and were reproducing exponentially. Then one year in Nebraska, it was reported that many people were passing away with stings and swelling on their bodies, which led many people to place the blame on radioactive hornet. Again, this is just a myth and no radiation didn't cause overgrown killer hornets. But still, these large Japanese hornets do exist and they go by the name of Asian Giant Hornet. At a number 5 spot, we have the Bailey House Museum. This red brick house in Brownsville was built just after the Civil War by Unison Officer Captain Benson M. Bailey. He alongside his wife lived in this house for many many years until financial depression hit, causing them to move away. This relocation would eventually place them in a more dangerous area, leading to their eventual murders. Their murders were never solved, but many claim that it was the fault of a jealous neighbor who poisoned the two in order to get their property. Whatever happened, what is known is that the spirit of Captain Benson Bailey is said to lurk the home to this day. He is said to slam doors open and shut in the house in order to display his dominance and when he's agitated, he will swing them back and forth until you just stop doing whatever it is that he doesn't like. Others have reported seeing the man himself walking the halls and even standing up against the doors motionlessly. At a number 4 spot, we have Hummel Park. Despite being a beautiful park in appearance, there is a much darker story to it that makes you think twice before stepping foot here. This area is said to be the place where many lynchings, hangings, and satanic rituals were performed. And some believe they are happening to this day deep within the woods of the park. A stairway in the park has been called the stairs to hell because it is reported that it's impossible to count the same number of steps ascending the stairs as it is descending the stairs. Other than the fact that this place is covered in satanic graffiti, this place is just one of those places you shouldn't test out. You know? Just in case. At a number 3 spot we have Walgreen Lake Monster. Just west of Nebraska is the Walgreen Lake and this body of water is said to hold a 40 to 100 feet beast. Witnesses have said it looks like an alligator that has two front legs and a flipper on its back. Others have said it has a serpentine body which closely resembles the Loch Ness Monster. But I swear, everyone everywhere believes they have the Loch Ness Monster in the area. Or is that just me? It's said that you'll know this monster is near is that when you smell a hard stench of rotting flesh. The first written record of this monster is from a 1922 issue of the Hay Springs News. The following year, a local man named J.A. Johnson described the monster in an interview with the Omaha World Herald. According to the report, Johnson and his two friends were camping on the banks of the lake when they 
noticed a creature about 60 feet away. The men claimed that as soon as the beast saw them, it belted out a huge roar, whipped around, and plunged beneath the muddy lake water. At number two spot, we have the Ball Cemetery. Ball Cemetery is a cemetery in Springfield, Nebraska that was first used during the 19th century by pioneers. There is only one way in and one way out, and trespassers have been greeted by a caretaker with a shotgun who lives nearby. But instead of the caretaker keeping people out of his cemetery, it's more like he's trying to stop them from entering a place that is cursed. For decades, it has been said that this dark and lonely plot of land in the middle of nowhere is haunted by mysterious entities that defy rational explanation. Tall male apparitions sometimes attack nighttime visitors, and a female ghost laughs, speaks, and tugs on people's clothing. Photographs taken here often contain anomalies which believers swear are evidence of ghostly presences. All the way at a number one spot, we have the Hatchet House. In the town of Portal, there is a one-room schoolhouse that held a very gruesome murder. Legend says that back in the early 1900s, a teacher snapped at her students after they were misbehaving for hours. She had already been having problems back at home as well, so this was her final straw. Except this would be a little bit too brutal for our liking. She would then proceed to lock the door to the classroom and pull out a rusty hatchet from underneath her desk. From here, she would decapitate every single student in the class, and then she took their heads and placed them on top of each of their desks. And it gets worse, so I apologize. She then carved out their hearts and brought them over to a nearby bridge to throw them down below one by one. With the number 10 spot, we're at the Goldfield Hotel. With a population of less than 300 people, this ghost town is bound to have something haunted within it. And guess what? It does. So this town got its name because it was discovered in 1902 because of a gold rush. As with many gold rush towns, when the gold went away, so did the people. Then in 1923, a fire engulfed the entire town, leaving the hotel standing alone. This hotel is now a symbol of what used to be and many visitors claim that is haunted by the former townsfolk. One of the most notorious spirits found in the hallways of the hotel is a woman named Elizabeth. Legend has it Elizabeth became pregnant with George Wingfield, which was one of the hotel's first owner's child. When he found out, he chained Elizabeth to a radiator in room 109 of the hotel. He supplied her with food and water until she gave birth. Some say Elizabeth passed away shortly after giving birth and ever since you can hear a baby and her woman crying from room 109. At number 9 spot with the Clown Motel. If you have a fear for clowns, this motel is probably the last place you want to sleep at. This hotel has an obvious theme for clowns and this was because the father of the owner was a clown collector and ended up being buried at the cemetery which is located right beside this motel. Motel and cemetery, probably about the most appealing combination. Not only does each and every single room have all types of different clown decorations, but past owners and workers have claimed that it was haunted since the time it was built. They would recall hearing footsteps and voices coming from unoccupied occupied rooms. Even on their website, they have different rooms and the spiritual encounters in each and every single one of them. Because of this, they have a disclaimer which reads, quote, by visiting the clown motel, you acknowledge that you may encounter interaction with spiritual and or unexplained phenomena and or other unexplainable, unusual or paranormal activity or interactions, which may include risk, which may or may not be foreseeable. The clown motel will not be held liable for any bodily damage, injury or personal property, emotional distress, death or other harm caused by aforementioned. Many others have visited this hotel and many other YouTubers have documented their trip, but you must be a clown to step into this one. Haha, <laughs> no, anyone? No, okay. At number eight spot, we have the Lovelock Cave. Located in the middle of Churchill County, the Lovelock Cave is one of those discoveries that makes you question our history a little bit. In 1911, two miners were sent to this cave to search for bat guano, which is just bat poop for those who don't know. They would collect loads of this stuff, but eventually as they got deeper into the cave, they began to discover things like baskets, shoes, and even skeletons of humans. The craziest part about this is that it claimed that the skeletons of the humans were giants. I don't mean like seven feet beings like Shaq, I mean like 10 to 15 tall beings. Local legend claimed that the local Paiute tribe was once at war with cannibalistic giants. The tribe was able to fight them back and trap the giants in this cave. They then filled the cave with deadly smoke to suffocate the rest of the giants in there. Even though bones have not been formally documented, it could be hidden from the public. Who knows? At number seven spot, we have Tahoe Tessie. On the border of California and Nevada lies the beautiful Lake Tahoe. Legends from the Paiute tribe talk about a serpentine beast who lives in an underwater tunnel beneath that very caves. Then in 1959, a police officer named Mickey Daniels reported that something large rocked his boat while he was fishing with a friend at Lake Tahoe. And it was a cause of concern because his boat was 43 feet long. So something huge must have shaken it up. 
except there's no sort of whales in Tahoe, so many claimed it was actually the beast Tessie. They believe Tessie to be around 80 feet long and to be as thick as a telephone pole. Many claim it has relations to the Loch Ness Monster in Scotland, and if you see these two side by side, they honestly look like brothers. Regardless, just be wary of what lies underneath the depths next time you swim at Lake Tahoe. Sometimes the beauty in the area may be deceiving. At number six spot, we have Virginia City. So this whole city inside Nevada is considered to be haunted. Yup, a whole city. This place started off as a mining town and was one of Nevada's fastest growing cities, but in 1875, a fire engulfed everything within nine hours, leaving more than 2,000 structures destroyed, hundreds homeless, and over 300 passed away. Now it's said that the spirits roam the entire town, haunting every single building within it. For example, the old Gold Hill Hotel is said to have the ghosts of children running the halls and sense of rose when spirits are nearby. The Silver Queen Hotel is allegedly haunted by one of the former workers. It's said that her spirit grabs people's hair and attempts to trip them down the stairs. Then in the St. Mary Art Center, which was built in 1875, the same year of the fire, it's said that they offer paranormal investigations, including seances inside of the building. Right in the Humphrey list, we have Bally's Casino and the MGM Fire. Let's take a gamble and talk about the infamous fire that claimed the lives of many in the Las Vegas Strip. On November 21, 1980, in the world-renowned MGM Grand, a devastating fire engulfed the place, with it being the second largest loss-of-life hotel fire in the history of the US, with over 87 people passing away and 700 injured. During the fire, no alarms rang, and to make matters worse, sprinklers weren't even installed in all parts of the building. Eight months after, and the MGM Grand Hotel was rebuilt and reopened to the public, but ever since, visitors claimed all sorts of paranormal activity. This includes ghostly apparitions on the same casino floor as the site of the fire, with some reporting that the ghosts are actually still gambling to this day, which is attributed to their last mortal moments before their passing. At number four spot, we have Area 51. Couldn't mention Nevada without Area 51. If you haven't been living under a rock, then you must know that this place is a potential alien hotspot. Many people believe this is a place where the government does secret tests with alien technology, and some claim that they keep aliens captive here. The most popular case was from Bob Lazar, who, who have claimed to work in Area 51 and said that he saw a UFO firsthand describing it in very specific details. This led many to believe in his theory and for probably forever, Area 51 will always be associated with alien activity until the US government tells me otherwise. At number three spot, we're the Flamingo Hotel. Until this violent murder six months after its opening in 1947, the Flamingo Hotel was the pride and joy of notorious mobster Bugsy Siegel. Siegel took over the final phases of construction and convinced more of his underworld associates such as Meyer Lansky to invest in the project. Siegel reportedly lost patient with the project's rising costs, and he once mentioned to the builder Del Webb that he personally killed 16 men on the job. However, some claim that he decided to stay indefinitely. Bugsy has allegedly been seen at the Garden Memorial, inside the wedding chapel, and roaming around the presidential suite, which still has the gold bathroom fixtures from his original room. Guests in his suite have reported hearing whispering and seeing dark shadows looming at the foot of their beds. At number two spot, we're the Mob Museum. At a time, Las Vegas Vegas was controlled by the mob and some believe they still do. So it's no surprise a museum of mob activity was built to recognize some of the horrific acts they committed. All of their exploits are documented at this mob museum, renovated from the same downtown courthouse where many of these characters were prosecuted. As you can imagine, they weren't too happy about their jail sentences, and some say their spirits still roam the halls after hours. The supernatural energy is especially strong near an exhibit dedicated to the St. Valentine Day Massacre, featuring a brick wall from a parking garage where seven Chicago gangsters were shot dead in 1929. All the way at a number one spot, we have La Plaza Mansion. Although this property is pretty well put together, once you know about its past, you'll definitely look at it differently. It got such a bad rep, it eventually was considered to be Satan's Mansion. Built in 1959, this now abandoned building was home to a threatening gangster. Here in this house, he would organize many of his hits, he would also execute others in that home, and he kept many people captive inside of the basement and the attic. So as the years went by, the house claimed more and more lives, eventually to a point when it reeked of the paranormal. Everyone who moved into the La Palaza Mansion reports a presence of negative energy that hangs over everything. And that's just where the haunting begins. If you visit, be prepared to hear whispers saying, get out of here or kill her. And sometimes you might have some piece of furniture or decoration thrown at you aggressively. Number 10, Goody Cole. In 1656, good wife Eunice Cole, otherwise known as Goody Cole, was convicted of witchcraft and suffered through the harrowing experience of being tried and punished for a crime she may have not committed. After being released from prison in 1670, Cole returned to Hampton, but unfortunately, her troubles were far from over. Despite being found innocent during her second trial, Cole was treated like an outcast by her neighbors and was forced to survive by scavenging for berries. Legend has it that since her death, Cole has been 
responsible for a number of tragedies in Hampton, including the sinking of a ship that killed eight people, as well as the haunting of the town in general. Eventually, many of the town folk would report her many times, and eventually they feared her and coined her with the name Witch of Hampton. Finally, in 1938, the town finally exonerated Cole and acknowledged that she may have been the victim of a terrible injustice. May have. It wasn't until the 1960s that a grave marker was set up in her honor, and since then, Cole has been regarded as a much less harmful spirit. Number 9, The Legend of Chikora. The Legend of Chikora is a well-known tale in New Hampshire, particularly in the White Mountains region. According to legend, Chikora is a mound in the White Mountains that is home to a mysterious and fearsome creature known as the Chikora Monster. The Chikora Monster is said to be a large furry beast with glowing red eyes and a ferocious appetite. It is said to roam the forest preying on any animal or person that crosses its path. Some say that the creature is a mutant created by toxic waste, while others believe it is a supernatural being with powers beyond human understanding. However, according to the legend, Takora was a proud Indian chief who left his son in the care of a white man while he traveled. When he returned, he found that his son had died in an accident. In a rage, Takora killed the white man's family, starting a cycle of revenge. The white man chased Takora to the top of the mountain, which is now known as his name, and as the Indian chief prepared to throw himself off of the mountain rather than give in, he uttered a very bad curse. Since then, the mountain is said to have been the site of strange occurrences which many people attribute to this curse. Number 8, Cochico Mills. The Cochico Mills in Dover, New Hampshire has a dark history attached to it. Back in 1907, the building nearly burned down to the ground, which ended up killing several workers. And ever since, the reports of ghostly activity have persisted. Apart from those passed away in the fire, the mills has also been said to be haunted by the ghost of a former worker named Mary. According to the legend, Mary was a young woman who worked at the Cochico Mills in the 19th century. One day, while working on the upper floors of the mills, she accidentally fell to her death, and since her tragic accident, her ghost is said to haunt the Cochico Mills, particularly on the upper floors where she fell. Many people claim to have seen her ghost, often describing her as a young woman with long hair and a very, very sad expression on her face. Some say that they have heard her footsteps echoing through the empty corridors of the mill, or people who are left alone at night have said to encounter her completely and even spoken to her. Number 7, the Omni Mount Washington Hotel. The Omni Mount Washington Hotel is a luxurious and historic hotel located in the picturesque White Mountains of New Hampshire. Built in 1902 by entrepreneur Joseph Stickney, the hotel was the last of its kind to be built in the area, marking the end of the Grand Hotel era. Mr. Stickney married the beautiful Caroline Foster, who was 27 years his junior, just 10 years before the grand opening of the hotel. Tragically, Mr. Stickney passed away a year after the hotel's grand opening, leaving Coraline to inherit the hotel and all of its wealth. Caroline, who was known to be a little eccentric, eventually married a French prince and spent her winters in France, but she still maintained a strong connection to the Mount Washington Hotel. Legend has it that Coraline's ghost haunts the hotel to this day, with reports of a figure wandering the halls and even sitting on the edges of guests' bed. It is also said that lights here flicker on and off at will, and the sounds of crying babies can be heard in the ballroom when no one is there. Guests can stay in the Princess Suite Room 314, where Caroline's four-poster bed is still used to this day. And if you don't believe me, just ask any of the staff about their experience with the alleged ghost and I guarantee they'll have a story of their own. This natural historic landmark offers not only the possibility of a paranormal encounter, but it also has these stunning views of the surrounding mountains, so visit here for whatever reason you want. Number 6, the Saco River. The Saco River, which flows for 136 miles from Crawford Notch to Saco Bay in Maine, has a long and mysterious history. The river is known for its varying water conditions, ranging from quiet stretches to rough rapids with fast currents. It is also known for its dark legend, which dates back to the early 1600s. According to the legend, Chief Squando of the Saco tribe was canoeing on the river with his wife and infant son when three English sailors snatched the baby from the mother and threw him into the water. The sailors were reportedly drunk and wanted to see if Native American infants were strong swimmers, as they had heard. The mother was able to rescue the baby, but he tragically passed away just a few days later. Chief Squando was said to have magical powers, and he placed a curse on the river, declaring that it would claim three white lives annually. From that day forward, the Saco River has been known as the River of Death. The legend of the river curse has been passed down through the years, and it is said that the river has claimed many, many lives, both of tourists and locals alike. There are no exact records of the lives that have been lost to the river, as the legend dates all the way back 300 years ago. Some say that the curse is to blame for these tragedies, while others attribute them to the river's strong currents and dangerous rapids. Whatever the cause, the Saco River is a force of nature that demands respect and caution from all those who venture near its banks. Number 5, the 1686 house. The 1686 house 
House in Kingston, New Hampshire is a restaurant that was originally a home, one of the oldest ones in the town. It has a rich history and is also rumored to be haunted. So this is when a team of paranormal investigators and a psychic decided to visit and try to capture evidence of any paranormal activity. The team was equipped with infrared cameras, digital recording devices, video equipment, monitors, and also received permission from the Gillespie family who owns the property. Psychic Jeff Noyle is reported sensing the presence of watching Indians, an older man leading a horse and a carriage, and a man sitting in the corner of a dining room that was part of the original barn. Michael Sullivan and Karen Mosey, the paranormal investigators, also captured an image on video and Mosey recorded voices, including comments such as, those are locked, there's hundreds of angels, and I'm frightful, and get those things off of you. Cold spots, which are thought to indicate the presence of ghosts, were also detected in this old building. As well, Noel sensed a presence of children playing in a small dining room, and on the brighter side, he also sensed a loving presence and stolen kisses in a stairwell. The team also found an old root cellar in the basement where Noyles reported that parents used to hide their children during storms. It is impossible to say for certain whether the reported paranormal activity was genuine or not, but the 1686 house is certainly a place with an interesting history and a potential for otherworldly encounters. Number four, Portsmouth Lighthouse. The Portsmouth Harbor Lighthouse in New Hampshire is said to be haunted by the ghost of Joshua Card, who is one of its most famous and dedicated lighthouse keepers. Card served as a keeper of the lighthouse for 35 years from 1874 all the way to 1909 and he was known for his intelligence, punctuality, sense of humor and kindness to his neighbors and visitors. However, after his retirement and death in 1911, stories began to circulate about Card's ghost haunting the lighthouse and the surrounding area. Reports of paranormal activity at the lighthouse included shadowy figures being seen, voices being heard and figures appearing in broad daylight dressed in old-fashioned keepers uniforms. The ghost hunting team for the television show Ghost Hunters investigated these reports and concluded that the lighthouse was likely haunted. It's believed that Card's spirit remains at the lighthouse due to his love for the location and his dedication to maintaining it during his lifetime. Visitors to the lighthouse have reported strange occurrences such as feeling his presence, hearing unexplained footsteps and voices, and seeing really weird shadows and lights all around the area. Some have even claimed to have had conversations with his ghost, who is said to still be watching over the lighthouse and the waters it guides ships through. Number three, the Blair Bridge. The Blair Covered Bridge in Campton, New Hampshire is a historic structure with a reputation for being a paranormal hotspot. It was originally built in 1829, but in only a few months, it was burned down by an arsonist named Lem Parker, who claimed that strange voices told him to do it. He made claims towards hearing demonic voices and growls inside of his head. Despite Parker's confession, he was never convicted due to a lack of witnesses. And after the bridge was rebuilt in 1870, it served as an important transportation route to connecting various highways and roads. However, it has also been the site of numerous unusual accidents and incidents, leading some to believe it is cursed. Some say it is haunted by an evil spirit, while others attribute the bad luck to coincidence. Then in 2011, the bridge was severely damaged by a giant limb during her Hurricane Irene causing over 2.5 million dollars in damages. But back to the paranormal, other visitors claim to see shadowy figures when they walk near or even over the bridge where they are known to call out your name in an attempt to bait you close to the edge of the bridge. Whether or not this bridge is cursed or haunted, anything with the name Witch or even Blair is enough to make me find an alternative route. Number 2, Blood Cemetery. With the word blood in your name, there's really nothing good to expect. Blood Cemetery in Hollis, New Hampshire is a place that is rumored to be haunted by the ghost of Abel Blood, who has been buried there since the year 1867. According to some reports, the finger carved on Blood's headstone points heavenward during the day and then points towards the ground at night. Fiona Broom, a paranormal investigator and author, has heard accounts of this phenomenon from people she trusts and has also experienced difficulty taking photographs in the cemetery. Two friends decided to go here in order to investigate paranormal activity back in 1990. While there, one of the friends saw a headstone with an engraved hand that appeared to be leaking a brownish rust colored fluid. The other friend went to see the headstone for himself and reported feeling as though someone or something had pushed him. The friends left the cemetery and later learned that the hand on the headstone points downward at sunset. The headstone with the hand has since became well known in the paranormal community and was eventually replaced in 2007. Number one, the Smutty Nose Murders. The Smutty Nose Murders, also known as the Haystack Murders, occurred on the small island of Smutty Nose off the coast of New Hampshire in 1873. The victims were two young women. 
Anif Christensen, and Karen Christensen. And a third woman, Marin Hontvet, who managed to escape despite being severely injured. The killer, Luis Wagner, was a fisherman who had been hired by the woman's brother, John Hentvet, to work on their fishing schooner. On the night of the murders, Wagner broke into the woman's home and attacked them with a hatchet. Anith and Karen were killed while Marin managed to escape and seek help from their neighbors. Wagner was eventually arrested and eventually convicted of the murders despite denying his guilt and claiming that he had an alibi. He was sentenced to death and hanged in 1875 and the Smutty Nose murders became a sensation at the time with newspapers across the country covering the trial and the subsequent execution of Wagner. Ever since, many believe that the island is haunted by the spirits of these two women. As the reports kept coming in, the island became more popular which eventually inspired Anita Shreve's novel, The Weight of Water, just for those who want to read more about this. Movie.